ladies and gents, thank you for watching. I uh, thought I would just explain these um, different types of arc lamp that we've been playing with. Now this is a halide lamp and there's an electrode at this end and that end and the electricity wants to jump across. Now as this becomes more pressurised, as it gets hot it produces more light and it's the same down here with this sodium. Oh, it's a little tiny tube, um, there's no wire going from one end to the other, it's literally an arc and it's the same thing. As this becomes more pressurised it gives off more light Alright, so to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a little tiny flyback driver, which is a high voltage, high frequency unit. And if I put that on there, when this is cold, it doesn't produce very much light at all. And I use this to get lamps going. So there's a halide lamp there, yeah. And also, as you've probably seen before, it's good for checking the old fluorescent tubes. There's a white one and there's a blue one out of a flyer killer a CFL and you can even use it on a Xenon don't know if you're going to see this one, I might adjust that camera slightly well, this is a Xenon lamp and that's it's very good because with these lamps it takes quite a pulse to get it to travel from one end to the other but if you actually use a high frequency device like that you can use it to ignite the uh, path of the electrons so what I'm going to do now we've got a sodium tube right? now that is it there when it's cold it doesn't give off much light see a little arc there so we're going to power this tube up and then we're going to do the same thing and you'll see a lot more light output just get that on there as you can see I'll use that to actually create the ignition I'll get that to stay on there it hasn't actually got to touch it, it just has to be near it right, can you give us 250 watts and ignition lovely right, I'm in a bit of an hour, give us another 400 um, give us another 250 just letting that build up, it's changing colour. Okay, and kill that power. Lovely. Now I'm going to disconnect this. Hopefully, now, right, when I get that near there, you can see it's emitting a lot more energy simply because that sodium in there is hot and under pressure. And as I said, the more pressure and the more heat in there, the more light we get. The camera just drifted there a bit. And that's still on that same supply. There's only about one watt going through that, and it's giving us all that light. It doesn't even have to be near it, so it looks like it's glowing red hot, but it's not. As soon as I put it near there, it starts to come on, see? It's almost like magic, isn't it? It's all this focus, eh? that's all over the place. But there it is, that's on. And obviously as this cools down, it won't emit so much light. So if we do the same thing with a halide, all right? this is a halide tube when it's cold. There's not a great deal of light coming out of that arc, as you can see. So we're going to heat it up temporarily with a little bit of power and then do the same thing. So if I put that near there, that just helps me get the ignition. Right, if you give us 250 and ignition, you can give us another 400. I'll just let that warm up a little bit. Uh, should we take the piss and give it a thousand? Give it a thousand and see what happens. Alright, take off that thousand. And kill the whole lot. Lovely. Cheers.
Right, so this tube now has got warm. So the gas in here is under pressure. Alright. Now I'm going to put it on that same supply, which is about one watt. Now you can see that arc in the middle is very tight. And it's emitting a lot more light because the gas in there is hot and it's under pressure. Hopefully, that's been quite interesting. Who knows? We're going to try now and do a xenon lamp. These lamps are only supposed to be flashed on and off, but we're going to fire it up continuously. Which isn't good because these can explode. But once again, right, I'm going to come right out. There's a xenon lamp. I'm going to use my high frequency just to excite the gases, and that's going to start the main current flowing. So if you give us 250, right, we're going to just give it a brief on and give it, I don't know, two seconds then kill the power. Yeah, go on then. That's 250. Right, off. Do the same thing now, but with a thousand. A thousand watts. So on and then off. Off, yeah. So you can see that's very bright. Let's have that again, that was quite good. Let's have another shot of a thousand. Yeah, go on then. And off. That's not recommended to run a xenon lamp like that. Now, should we really take the piss and fire up a fluorescent tube in the same way? So we put 250 watts for a fluorescent tube and see what happens. Let's have a go. It'll probably pop it. This is the last little experiment, but that's red hot that tube now. Right, so normally you'd need a pulse to get this tube going. Right, but there. The electrons in there are already excited. So it'd be very easy now to stick uh, a main arc through that and uh, see how bright we can actually get that. So if we select up there 250, yeah, again, run it quite briefly. Give us two seconds on it. Yeah, go on in. Yeah. There's 250 watts going through that tube. Should we do it till it pops? Go on and give it another little blast. Put 250 watts through, through that tube, that's quite good. That's it, it killed itself. So there we run an 8 watt fluorescent tube on 250 watts um, until it died. That was quite interesting, that. Um, Oh, look at that, just broken off. That killed it, didn't it? It's quite a clean cut. But there you are, that's how we use the high frequency flyback driver, which actually I stole it out of a plasma ball to initiate arc lamps. It's very good for that. Ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Um, we've got something else coming up shortly, so keep looking at the channel. See you later, boys and girls.